Welcome, come in, have a seat. Okay, I think that uh, as many people as are coming are here, so we will commence our uh, Remembrance Day observance and start off with the invocation, which will be given by the Reverend Dick Mangum. You'll uncover. If you would, please stand. Uh, let me tell you how honored I am to be here today. Uh, I might have been old enough, I don't recall, to have fought in this war. But my grandfather did. And I never had the privilege of meeting him because he passed uh, before I was born. But my mother's father, John Dunn, of whom I'm named after, I uh, fought in the Civil War, and I, I count it a real privilege to be here today. If you would please bow your head with me. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that brings us together today. We thank you for all that has happened in the years following uh, the end of such a, a mighty battle that settled so many things so many, many years ago. Good men on both sides of the battle uh, fought on, uh, for things that they believe very strongly in. But what brings us today together is that at the end of that conflict, that they understood it be wise to have a day of forgiveness. We thank you that you're the one who has shown us the way to forgiveness. As uh, on Calvary's cross, you cried out across the ages, Father, forgive them. We pray that we might, even today, for those uh, whom we think have wronged us, have uh, the wisdom to uh, use that wonderful attribute known as forgiveness. We pray as we're gathered together and remember uh, the many years that have passed and the many things that have happened that have brought us to this day, we pray that you will bless our memory and bless our future. We pray that you will bless this country. We realize, Lord, that uh, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. But uh, we pray that you will be the one that is sovereign over all decisions that are made. We thank you that uh, uh, when the disciples were wanting to learn uh, how to better follow you, that uh, you told them to pray a prayer of forgiveness. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us today as we come together and in an attitude of real thanksgiving, but in an attitude of forgiveness for all that might have gone wrong in the past, that we shall look forward to a future full of hope. And as you've taught those disciples to pray, we pray that you would teach us to pray that wonderful prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen. You may be seated, thank you. For those of you who are not familiar with the significance of this, this ceremony, I'd like to give you a little background. In the year 1868, three years after the end of the war, groups of veterans from either side, this Union as well as Confederate, met on the cemetery grounds in um, Gettysburg and declared a day of remembrance. And they finished that day off by meeting at a uh, monument similar to our Monument to the Unknown and formed two lines facing each other 
and shook hands across that line to show that they had indeed uh, become one country and had buried the hatchet, shall we say, and uh, that they were no longer going to be uh, combatants against one another, but were comrades in arms. Each side fought and put their life on the line for what each side thought was the right side. God only knows which side was right, but uh, we know how the war ended, so uh, that's a good clue. But in any event, uh, that's the background of Remembrance Day, and we here in St. Cloud over the last, well, I think I did one about seven or eight years ago, and uh, we did it for a couple of years, and then we sort of lapsed, and now we're going to try to start it up the the uh, tradition again that on the commemoration actually the reason that the date is picked of the 18th of uh, November or as close as there too is because that's the day of the Gettysburg Address by by Abraham Lincoln he gave that address in, on that date so every year in Gettysburg since 1868 they have gathered and done that uh, Remembrance Day the very last Union veteran, Albert Wilson, died in 1953, and that was the end of the actual uh, veterans attending that, uh, that ceremony. But since then, the sons of Union veterans and the sons of Confederate veterans have uh, met and uh, carried on the, con the, uh, the ceremony. Okay, we will now uh, uh, pledge allegiance to our flag. We have already posted the flag, so if you will stand. And those of you who are in uniform, we salute. The rest put their hands over their hearts and follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. You may be seated again. <coughs> yes, color guard. And, uh, color guard. Keep that forward, mark. Right and left face towards the center. Touch. Forward, mark. Off. Right and left face. Forward, mark. Watch it. <laughs> All right, the agenda now calls for the laying of wreaths, but I don't see any wreaths. Oh, yes. Oh, the wreaths are out there? Where? Oh, by the cannon. Okay. Uh, our wreath is already out there by, our, uh, by the cannon. Uh, that brings us to... Uh, the actual happening which uh, this day commemorates and that is the Gettysburg Address and we have with us uh, Abraham Lincoln in the persona of uh, our past camp commander Skip Whitlam who is going to uh, recite to us the Gettysburg Address. Fourscore and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the principle. Correction, proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived could long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as the final resting place for those who gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do so. 
but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is for us to be here dedicated to the task remaining before us, that for those honored dead, we take increased devotion for the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Okay, we have concluded our honoring of the, the veterans who were buried here. And I might point out, as a matter of interest to those who do not know, this cemetery, Mount Peace, holds the largest number of Union veterans of any cemetery in the former Confederate States that is not a government uh, facility. This is the largest privately owned cemetery in all of the 11 uh, Confederate states as far as numbers of, uh, of Union dead. There's 383 or four, somewhere in there, uh, buried here. And uh, as another side, for those of you who are not from here, and maybe some that are that don't know it, this was originally called Soldier City, and it was founded by members of the Grand Army of the Republic. As a matter of fact, you could not buy a lot here unless you were a member of the GAR. It was a subscription, and you bought a, a lot, and it gave you a lot in town and five acres out of town to, uh, as a truck garden to support yourself. And they came here in, I believe, 1905, and spent a year or two in tents, cleaning out because they didn't know that when they got here that they were going to be looking at scrub brush and palmettos. Uh, I think that the, the person who sold them the property painted a rosier picture of, um, some, of what they were going to be looking at. So, and that's not an uncommon thing amongst uh, real estate people, I guess. <laughs> at least it wasn't a swamp. <laughs> I think some people bought swamp. Okay, uh, 
We are now going to uh, reenact the ceremonial handshake. If you'll all turn around and look behind you, you'll see on one side a member of the Jacob Summerlin camp, Sons of Confederate Veterans, and on the other side, a member of the uh, Lucius Mitchell camp, Sons of Union Veterans. And they are going to reach across and shake hands now. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And we here in, uh, in Florida, members of both, and I happen to be, by the way, a, what's called an SOB, a son of both, and uh, we are not refighting the war. <laughs> okay, uh, you can turn back around. Thank you. And at this point, I'd like to call uh, the Reverend Mangum back up, and uh, he'll give us our closing benediction. If you'll rise and uncover. Thank you so much. It's been my privilege to be here. Let's bow our heads, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that uh, so many years ago, that you initiated uh, peace, that uh, we can have not only peace among brothers, among ourselves as a people, but we can attain peace with thee. We're so thankful for that. We pray for our nation. We've been through so many things and uh, so much yet to come. And we pray that as uh, Abraham Lincoln said so many, many years ago, that we shall rededicate ourselves, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that the government of the people, by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you for this country. We thank you for those who have uh, made it possible for us to live in this kind of freedom. And we thank you for all that you've done for us in providing us this opportunity. We pray that you'll bless us as we go from this place. And we pray that our lives might be lived out in a manner of forgiveness and in peace with our brothers around the world. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Cover. That concludes our ceremony. You may s sit for a minute, if, uh, if you will, and I'll have a few closing words. <laughs> Very few. <laughs> I'm glad to see that we did get some, some people out here. We uh, could have used a few more, and uh, it's, I don't know what the reason for that. Perhaps the weather kept some people away, but uh, we did get some notice in the newspaper at least for a couple of weeks that this was going to happen. Uh, next year we'll do whatever it is that we ha need do to try to get a better uh, turnout and uh, but we do appreciate those of you that did turn out and I hope that the uh, ceremony taught you something about what we're doing here and what both of our camps this both the Sons of Union Veterans and the Sons of Confederate Veterans are trying to do, and that is to educate the public on the war past. I won't call it any, I'll just call it the war past. So that concludes our ceremony, and I thank you for your attendance. Huzzah! Oh. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> yeah. May we, as we stand here by this grave, remember that it is our duty as Sons of Union veterans of the Civil War to honor the memory of the men who stood shoulder to shoulder on the bloody field of battle, who guarded so faithfully, so honestly, and so well the sacred bond of statehood and who fought for liberty and the dear old flag. They have passed away through their final review and upon us have developed 
shall devolve by sacred right of heritage the duty of perpetuating the principles which they fought. May we not forget as the years roll on that we too shall have battles to fight, that in time we too shall be carried to the silent city of the dead, and that our lives here should but fit us for the great bowback of eternity. The chaplain will evoke the divine blessing and uncover food. God of battle, battles in peace, ruler of the destinies of the countries of the men of men, in this silent camping ground, then we come before thee asking thy blessing as we honor the memory of this defender of our country's honor. William J. Kingsbury, wilt thou in thy infinite tenderness comfort those who mourn thee? Wilt thou speak words of comfort and consolation to the sorrowing hearts? Look in mercy, we pray thee, upon the widows and orphans and deceased veterans everywhere. Bless and save from every evil the country for which your soldier and our fathers fought. Preserve it in purity and integrity. Bless the members of this order as they have gathered here in response to the call of love and duty to perform these rites of remembrance over one of our nation's preservers. And at last grant that we may all meet before thee for thy throne and to thy name shall we ascribe praise both now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we remember William Kingsbury, let us cherish his example as a patriot and defender of those principles he believed to be right. Let us forget his failings, for he was human, remembering only his virtues. Let us so live that when we, <clears throat> that time shall come, those we may leave behind may say above our graves, Here lies the body of a true-hearted, brave, and earnest defender of the Republic. Officer of the day, let the guard of honor set up the symbol of the army, but let a soldier be detailed to guard it. In behalf of the Sons Union Veterans of the Civil War, I give this tribute as a symbol of an undying love for the comrades of the war. You should take one step back to render a salute before returning to the line. symbol of purity we offer at this lowly grave of rose. May future generations emulate the unselfish devotion of even the lowliest of our heroes. Last token of affection of the sons of comrades in arms, we crown these remains in the symbol of victory. Seems well we should leave comrade William J. Kingsbury here to rest in honor where over him will bend the arching sky as it did in great love when he pitched his tent or lay down weary and footsore by the way of the battlefield for an hour's sleep. As we then, as was then, so he is still in the hands of the Heavenly Father. Let us also then remember those honored dead who did not return to hearth and home, but lie in resting places known but to God. The unknown dead. Above their rest, there is no sound of weeping, only the voice of songbirds through the air. Unknown their graves, yet they are in God's keeping. There are none missing from his tender care. 
He knows each hallowed mound at its at his pleasure, marshals the sentinels of earth and sky. For their response, kind nature heaps her treasure, fanned by soft winds which round them gently sigh. Bravely they laid down their all upon the altar, counting as naught the sacrifices and pain. Theirs but to do and die without a falter, ours to enjoy the victory and the gain. They are not lost, but only which was mortal, lies neath the turf or arched by southern skies. Deathless they wait upon the heavenly portal in a fair land where the vapor never dies. In the great heart of the coming generations, their fame shall live, their glory never cease, even when comes to all earth's troubled nations. God's gift, God's precious gift of universal peace. He that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. Cover? Amen. Sorry. Still have working caps? I don't know. Yep. Could you please fire three volleys for this comrade of ours? May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rest upon and abide with us forever. Amen. 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 Our service of dedication is ended. In the name of the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War, I thank you for your courtesy and permitting us, who are bound by special ties to them, to honor our dead. Dismissed. Huzzah! 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 Huzz